All right, welcome back. The show is still the City Countdown. It's time for us to speak to our guests on this spotlight. Now, at the beginning, I did mention some few things about him, and he's here in the studio. So we're going to catch up with him, get to know about his latest album, which is doing well already, and then find out why he decided to go into other businesses. You know, we don't talk about yeah. Right? Is that what it is, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 But, but where is that from? <laughs> it's my grandmother. Oh, is it? You know, when I started doing music, I used to say, yes, boss. But my grandmother is gone. So when you, when you <laughs> say something to her, she says, yeah, <laughs> instead of yes. So then when she passed away, I started oh, changing from yeah, yes, boss, boss too. To, yeah. So, <laughs> okay, so your grandma knew you were doing music. Yeah. What of your parents? Yeah. They knew you were doing music. Yeah. Is that what you always wanted to do growing yeah, up? Yeah, but they didn't accept it till it actually turned into something. Your first single was in 2009, Target Practice. Yeah. Before then, what were you doing? I was in school. So this Target Practice was me straight out of university. Into music? Yeah. But what were you in university studying for? Okay, so my when I first started university, I was doing economics. And then I was in UCC. Then I went to the University of Ghana Legon. Mm. And I did BFA Fine Arts, Music and Theatre Arts. Mm. So right after that, I went into music. So do you think that your background in Fine Arts and Music has helped you with your journey as a musician? Because you're not just doing music, you're doing music as a business. And you yeah. seem to be like the poster child for knowing how to do with the right. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think to a certain extent, yes. Even though it was, it was it, well, I wasn't learning the business side of things in, mm. in school. I was learning the, the arts itself. But you had an economics background. Yeah. So that kind of helped a bit yeah, as well. Yeah, that's, that's from, from senior high school to UCC. Yeah, the economics background. But University of Ghana was just theater arts all through. So I think wow. both worlds combined and mm. have helped me to get to this point. Now, many people would remember you like the... They once remember you with your brother Kweku T, yeah. you know, where you guys did music together and then you decided to, you know, set yourself apart. And yeah. for many, they remember Vera a lot yeah. because of how big and how huge that song was. Yeah. What I want to find out from you is when did you realize that this is what you wanted to do and go commercial with it? Um, I think from when I was about 18 years old, that's when I because I, I was so stubborn to the point that I got suspended from school three times and they were all for no reasons but leaving school to come and create music in Accra. <laughs> so I was so passionate about creating music when I was in a place where I couldn't create, I had to break balance to come to Accra. You're getting frustrated that you couldn't yeah. let yourself go to do yeah. music. First year, I did it so many times. I got caught first suspension. Second year, I did it so many times. I didn't get caught and I got caught one time second suspension the third time my final year i got kicked out of the school for wow that. so then if you risk all of your education mm. for something then you know that you're very passionate about mm. that thing and that was music for me what were some of the fears moving into that side of your life because Is you had a opportunity to go to school yeah. to study and do perhaps a white collar job or something but you had your mind your heart everything focused on music yeah. were there some fears that this thing might not work no you had a plan. I knew I was going to do it by hook or crook. I knew I was going to do it. Nothing. I, I didn't even think about what if this doesn't work. The only reason why I actually went through school was because of my family. And, and, and I didn't want to let them down because nobody in my family was really into music anyways. So, mm. yeah. so you get the first to do music in your family, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, nobody was really. In, even even from the business side of things, from the creative side of things, nobody was interested in wow. making music. So my mother was an educationist. She has masters upon masters. And so you wanted you to finish you? Yeah, so I, I said, you know what? At least just finish, wrap up your education. So as soon as I finished, I, just didn't, give I, didn't, even go, <laughs> I didn't even go back home. Oh, wow. I, I, you know, I was, in, I was recording in Adenta. Right. So I, I went from Ligon Street. to Adenta to record. So I just went. I just continued. That's why I recorded Target Practice with Kweku. Oh. And then from there, things started. The journey was from like when I was 18. So when I was like 22, 23, that's when I finished school. Mm. And then a year later, we, we released Target Practice and then things started picking up. Now, when I remember Target Practice and some of the hardcore rap songs you used to do back in the day before you started doing commercial songs like Vera and stuff like that. Yeah. Was the switch inspired or influenced by what 
Ghanaians wanted. Uh, any uh, come. <laughs> come. <laughs> because I mean, target practice and move and you know, yeah, uh, music, yeah. love and life. All all the songs were solid songs. Yeah. If, if if you're gonna be and very hip solid songs, songs hip hop yeah. songs, solid songs. But for some reason, Ghana phone shut and pet. Yeah, Ghana songs like that. Ghana and, and I don't I don't think it's even open a hundred percent yet. Mm. Like I hope the hip hop industry in Ghana, especially rapping in. English, English, yeah, wasn't something that was embraced at that time at all. So I, I think my first album, Music, Love and Life, I got so many nominations all over the world yes. from BET Awards, Channel O, Channel o, everything. Yeah. But I wasn't getting, I wasn't making money from the music. Hmm. So I had to commercialize the music a bit more, and so to say, dumb it down, dumb it down, yeah. Go do pigeon sometimes. Feature vocalists and who can sing in a local dialect, so that you so that was where the Kobna Kobna feature came from, the D crime feature came from. Yeah. So you you started seeing that oh okay wait a minute yeah be fat. After the after after target practice I, I knew that I had to switch it up a bit so that I could be more um, appealing to the Ghanaian masses. And you've been in the business for a decade now, eleven, years, see, 11 yeah. years and more, or even because I don't know if. You officially started doing music at, at 2009, like would you say 2009 okay, was my first release. Okay. My first official release was 2009 and I, as a group and then as D Black 2010. Okay, so 11 years, yeah. more, more or less. Okay, and the journey from that time to now, how would you rate yourself? How do you think you fared so far in the music industry that is always changing their music taste? You know, I've, I've done very, very well, mm. very, very well. I, I know people that I started off with that have quit along the way, who have diverted course, who have given up, mm. you know, who haven't attained the heights that they, they, yeah, they, yeah. they, they dreamt or mm. wish they could. And I'm just grateful that God has been able to bless me to get to this point. I'm very comfortable and I'm very happy with my pace. The pace. But you applied the brakes yourself at some point yeah, where you went off the scene. Yeah. Why was that? Was it because of the other ventures you want to get into, so you wanted to put your focus on that? Because you started running a record label as well. Yeah. You had the likes of Darling Gage, um, yeah. Joey B, yeah. you know, uh, what's the name of this DJ, DJ Breezy, yeah. you know. So was it because of that or no, you? it was because of Castro's disappearance. Oh. You know, um, the last song Castro released was featuring me. Yes. That That's not person. Oh, no. say, oh, sorry. And then the last song I released before he disappeared was also me featuring him, him yes. which was personal, personal person. person yes. And I was about to release an album at the time. It was my third album, and that was the first single of the album. Mm. And we didn't we didn't get a chance to perform any of the songs. Mm. And then that happened. So I was a bit too. I was a bit uncomfortable performing the songs by myself. Cause it hit you. Yeah. So. I decided to chill on the music for a little bit and focus on the other passions and the other interests that I had, which was setting up the label, helping other artists, um, the events company. We did um, the Bukum Banco Aite yeah, fight. fight yeah. We did the Stone Boy uh, concert, concert. the Dome concert. This is all under Lime Wire. Live Wire events. Live Wire events. Yeah, yeah. And I built um, the club, Club Onyx. Club Onyx, yes. And Oasis Lounge. Oasis Lounge and then signed some other artists along the line. So it was only until last year that I decided to get back to the music, 100%, wow. yeah. So your new album, how long did it take you to put all that together? About a year, I started working, okay, so last year in January, after Christmas, that's when I decided I was gonna get back to the music. So I didn't record an album. I took songs that I recorded in that four or five year period that's from 2016 to today. Yeah, I had like maybe like 50 songs I had recorded. I was just there. And you could, none of those songs were leaked. <laughs> no, no, no. I released maybe like every year I release one or two. Yeah. Okay. So I released one Bada with uh, with Kwame Eugene. Okay. I, I released one with um, Medical Call Bottles. I released one with Kitty as well. So all this while, did you think you're going to release an album? Yeah. As you're releasing the songs, you yeah. had a plan. You're going to release an album, yeah. but you didn't know when. I just didn't know when. Okay. So when um, I decided. I decided, okay, so all these songs, just put them together. Since you haven't promoted them like a proper artist should, mm. let's do a media tour around the world. Let's do South Africa, Europe, America, Ghana, mm. Nigeria. So I started in South Africa. So then we went, I went to America. I went to South Africa in February. Then we went to the US in uh, March. So the plan was to do a big launch in Ghana mm. in April. 
And then COVID hit. Yes. <laughs> so while I was in America, I did two out of seven uh, media events, mm. and then COVID hit. Everything got shut down. So I was stuck there from March, April, May, June, July. I finally got out of quarantine end of July or early August, I think. Mm. So that whole period where I was stuck in America, I started working on the album. Wow. Because there was it's absolutely solitude, nothing isolation, else to just do. Nothing yeah. to do. Yes. So I started working on the album, but then oh, I worked on it so much that it be, I started eating into a second album. Hmm. So when I got out of um, quarantine, I continued recording till I think March this hmm. year. Wow. Then I realized that I had like almost two and a half albums. <laughs> so then I, I went back into restructuring and I restructured them as two albums, hmm. loyalty and disloyalty. And I and I and I need to play catch up anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, my mates have, have five years. Yeah, because you've been out of the business for a while. Yeah, ahead of me with content. So I said, okay, you know what, this year I'm gonna drop two albums. Hmm. One in May, one in October. So we're expecting to see Another disloyalty album. in October. Yeah, October 20th. Do you think Ghanaians are gonna get choked with, with I that? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, doofu, doofu. Ooh, <laughs> no, but are the songs that we we've we've heard so far, and I am still. I think the album is still growing on me. No, but what it. you did with the the new cats, still Kamido, yeah. Kwamina MP, even Stoneboy, the German minister, I didn't see that coming because yeah. um, we know you to be like you know the hardest rapper you know sometimes you give us a commercial music, but the German minister has a different feel to it. Was yeah. it intentional? I wanted to do five different genres of music on both albums. Ah. So from house music, which is what the the uh, song with the Stoneboy, Stoneboy and yeah. is, is a combination of South African house and Afrobeat. Yes. I wanted to do high life, which is what I did with Ifia. Ifia, yes. I wanted to do hip hop, which I already did. I mean, just mm -hmm. <laughs> that's and your I wanted office. to do proper hip hop, like the one with Camido and um, Kofi Jama and them. And then I wanted to do Afrobeats, like the one with OT Genesis. And so to meet all the really five food ministry of Ghanaian yeah. music. Yeah, I wanted to touch everywhere. <laughs> wow. <Yeah>. Wow. So <laughs> what I want to find out from you right now is after you drop this loyalty, which is like your second part of the album, mm -hmm. what are you, are you going to go back to continuing the tour that you started that got truncated because of COVID? No, I'm actually, I'm actually starting next week. Oh, okay. So you're going to go to... I mean, I've started with Ghana this time. Okay, so what countries are you going to look at? So we're, on Thursday, we're starting with um, South Africa. Okay. Then we'll do Europe, and okay. then we'll go back to the U.S. as well. Okay. And we'll do Lagos, Abuja, and Kenya, a few African countries. I want to ask you this last question. For someone who has been in the industry for this, you know, long, I don't know, I don't know what 10 years will mean to someone else, but 10 years is a lot of mm -hmm. time, right? Would you say that the Ghanaian music industry pays? And would you say that is the only thing you need to do, if you do it well and do it right, you'll get your money? Or you need yeah. to focus on other ventures so that you can guard yourself? So when you say- Because you, you, you started as an independent artist and you yeah. had to do some things to, yeah. to, to, to support yourself. Um, I think that, you see, it's, it's an industry. It's not just creating music and feeding the people with the music. You need to build as an artist, I think you need to build a brand that you can use to leverage to do other things as well, because it's an industry. You need to create a brand that could sell merchandise. You need to create a brand. For me, I didn't sell merchandise. I sold uh, Lifestyle, which is a nightclub. Yeah. Mm. You know, that's what my brand resonates with. Mm. I've signed brand ambassador deals with, I've signed six brand ambassador deals my whole career. Wow. Half of them are drink, alcoholic <laughs> brands. <laughs> So it's it's a lifestyle that it's the that's what my brand resonates with. Mm. So I feel like as an artist, you should be able to build a brand to resonate with a certain lifestyle or you direction represent. that you can use to leverage on to make more revenue for yourself. Mm. You mm. know, if it's done right, you you, you make your money yeah, right. So because now the shows streaming revenue is almost as equal as show revenue now. Right. Right. Because the, the music is traveling beyond the borders of Ghana. That's another form of revenue. Um, the brand and endorsement deals are also another form of revenue. Mm. And like I said, if you build your brand, you can create your own merchandise. Stoneboy has done it. Sarkozy has done it. 
A lot so that of means you, you guys are proper examples to look at. I mean, if the yeah. young cats are coming to the game, they have you, they have somebody, they have soccer to look at. They don't yes. need to. This, you guys are their apport. Oh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm speaking to the man, D Black. And D Black, I want this is your camera. I want you to just tell people where to get your music and your favorite song that has a video on the album. You just want to tell them to go watch it right, right now. All right. Thank you for having me. God bless you. You're it's welcome. D Black, the Ghana boy, and you're on City Countdown, the top 10 songs in Ghana. I want you to check out my new video, D Black featuring Stoneboy and Kwamina MP, Enjoyment Minister. Yes, boss. Yeah. Yeah. Right back. <laughs> <laughs>